Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today we'll be painting a realistic bluegill. Now I've never seen a bluegill in my life before. Also I never painted one before. So I looked up a lot of reference pictures and I noticed that they are very different depending on where you are fishing. So I just chose a random picture that I really liked with some nice colors, very vibrant for a bluegill. Some were very dull and very dark, others were very light and had a lot of color going on. So I chose a colorful bluegill because I wanted to paint a colorful bluegill and it really stuck out from the rest. But no further ado, let's get into it. Alright, let's begin. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with a white base coat. Alright, our second base coat is gonna be a little bit of pearl white and that's just to give that pearl lesson effect that will be underneath the rest of our paint later. Alright, now this is dry, we're gonna look at our first reference picture and now it's very important that you see the underlying colors first. That means there is some blue on the gill plates and on top of that blue is green. So we're gonna start off to layer that blue first. Same with the orange on the belly. You can see that the brightest orange is underneath the scales. The brown little spots of the end of the tip of the scales are on top of that orange so that means that we're gonna need to start with that light orange first on the belly and then you can also see at the end of the of the body you can see a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple there those two colors are also underlying colors so we're gonna paint those first and then we're gonna put our green or our darker colors on top of that so it's very important if you want to paint realistic colors you will have to determine the underlying colors first and that's to create that depth, that realism. Alright, so first for the orange of the belly I'm gonna use Vallejo Sun Yellow and Hot Orange. First we're gonna layer our Sun Yellow and it's gonna be the brightest yellow orangey tint and then we're gonna make some spots a little bit darker with some Hot Orange. Alright, so now for the underlying blue tone, I used Wicked Opaque Daylight Blue, which is actually an opaque paint, but I reduced it with about 70% reducer, so it's going to be a little bit more subtle, it's not going to be transparent, it's still going to cover quite well, but it's going to be more subtle, as to create that really light blue effect. Now I'm going to use one of my masking stencils, these are just random shapes, and that's just to cover up those gill plates, so that I don't get any overspray onto the orange and that I nicely give that gill plate a blue color. Now I find I went too heavy with the blue here and maybe a little too dark with the orange as well. So what I'm going to try is to make these colors more subtle again and a little bit brighter. You can do them all over again, you can just spray white and do it all over, but I don't want to do that. I'm first going to try to save it by using Createx Pearl White and I'm going to cover those colors a little bit to push them in the background and make them a little bit more bright again by using a white pearl. I'm gonna do a second layer of white pearl. Now for that little bit of blue that's underneath there, I'm gonna use Wicked Pearl Bright Blue. And the special thing about this paint is that these pigments are super fine, they're almost like a highlight blue. But they do, they do color a little bit towards the blue. 
So I really love these pearl pigments to do subtle blue pearlescent effects and such. Alright, next up is our first layer of green. Now this green is quite bright and very textured. That means it's very irregular. And the best way to do this, in my opinion, is by using, using a wash. Now I love the Vallejo wash because they reactivate when they get wet. That means if I could, would go over there with a wet towel or a wet brush or another paint that's water based, it's going to reactivate that wash so I can erase or adjust these colors later on. So it's very easy to wipe out mistakes and such. So I just take a little bit, put it on my brush. I'm also going to do the base of the fins. little bit on to that orange just do it very irregular And what I also love to do is take just a regular paper towel, dip some wash on there, and that's going to create that first undertone. And there we have our first light dark green or light olive green we could say our first light olive green undertone for our bluegill. And if you see a spot and you don't like it just rub over it and then you can get rid of it quite easily. Then you can dip for some extra texture. So now this is dry. If we look at this reference picture, you can see there is this color shift going on. It's from a purple to a violet to almost a pinkish. And it's in between the scales. So we're going to recreate that first and then we're going to do the tip of the scales in a dark green color later. So this will be our underlying color shifting color again. And I'm going to use a brush for that just to get it on there and then we're going to do the rest later. So because we did a little darker base color which is a kind of an olive green, that color shift is going to pop a little bit more than it would be on white, but still it's going to be quite subtle because it's not too dark yet. I'm going to use pearl to violet for that violet kind of color shift and just put some on there a 
look at my reference picture so that I have a game plan. Right, so now this color shift is dry and I find it too subtle. There is that violet color change going on, but it's not that visible as on the reference picture. So I'm gonna need to use a brighter color to, to recreate that. So that's why I'm gonna use this color shift, which is a red to gold, but it looks pink in the bottle. And because this is not a black base, it's gonna look a little bit more pinkish than it's gonna look red to gold. So we're gonna see what that gives. Maybe this will be brighter. That definitely is brighter. I think I'm gonna get away with this. All right, so now that that color shift is dried, I really like the color actually. It's a little too bright when it comes to the pink. It should have been more violet, but it is really vibrant and it's gonna be pushed in the background once we do the green on top of it. So now it's time to do the second and third nuance of green on top of the back to finish that green. And we're going to use these washes again. And I'm just going to dip them on with a paper towel. And it's going to leave a real nice texture and it's going to create a lot of depth and make it look really realistic instead of airbrushing it on there. So I take my Vallejo wash dark green again, same as we used before. Take a few drops. Now I make a small tip, make sure it's really small. You can notice that the green starts to turn darker and that's because when you build up washes they turn darker and darker and darker. So the more I dip it on there the darker it's gonna get. And because I dip it, it's not going to get dark evenly like you would with an airbrush. But it's going to create a lot of texture because it's very uneven as you can see on the front of the head. That is really nice and texturized and that looks really realistic. So now that this is dry, I'm going to use a Vallejo Wash Olive Green. Which is actually darker than a dark green. So I use Olive Green. To do the darkest parts. And now we're gonna make the dark striping and as you can see the, the striping is very faded and very subtle. So I'm just gonna dip it on there just like we did before with a little bit of dark green with a paper towel. The first color, the first layer of the striping is going to be very subtle, but we're going to build it up slowly and gradually. Now I'm just going to use a small tipped paintbrush, and I'm still using that Vallejo dark green. I'm going to draw out a little bit of those lines.
and now before all the lines are dry I'm just gonna take away those last undried spots of paint And that makes the lines more subtle and blended in with the gill plates. Uh, gill plates, sorry. With the with the scales, yeah, with the scales. That's it. So now it's more blended in with the scales. It's a little bit back into the background, but it feels very natural. Those lines. It's not too much. Now we're now we want to darken the back even a little more. So I'm gonna take dark gray here and I still got my other wash which is my olive green and I'm just gonna mix a little bit of dark gray with that olive green Now if we look on our reference picture, the orange and the blue on the belly and a little bit on the sides has some darker spots here and there. This is a darker brownish orange. So we're going to paint that on there and we're going to use Wicked Detail Burnt Sienna, which is a perfect color for doing those spots. So I just grab some 4050 here and some burnt sienna and I'm gonna mix that the 4050 is going to make my paint adhere better dry stronger make it's gonna create a more durable lure and also it's gonna make the burnt sienna a little bit more transparent so now we take just a little bit of paint and we start to do all the scales And this doesn't have to take too long, you can just do a little bit freehand, make them a little bit random. Now I want some spots on there to be a little darker, so I'm gonna use some Wicked Detail Sepia. I'm just gonna mix that with my burnt sienna. I just randomly I'm gonna make some spots a little darker. Alright, now for the head, for the blue, to create a little bit of a texture there. I'm going to use a little bit of masking fluid. I'm going to put it on a flat brush and then with a toothpick I'm going to spatter it on there. And while I'm waiting for the masking fluid to dry I'm gonna use a little bit of pearl white again and shoot on top of those darker spots with it because I find them too dark and they stick out too much they do not blend in so I'm gonna push those a little bit more in the background with some pearl white Alright, now our liquid mask is dry, I'm gonna use a little bit of Wicked Detail Moss Green to darken the head, the fins, the upper fins a little bit and the back as well. Now 
Now I'm gonna mix a drop of detail sepia in there to make it even a little darker. Also to create a little bit more texture in that blue, I'm gonna use a little bit of Vallejo Magic Blue here. I'm just randomly gonna put some spots and little stripes on. And I do rub it out with my finger just to make the paint more subtle on there, to make the lines less crisp, to fade it out a little. Alright, so now it's time to rub off our liquid mask, and I'm just going to use my thumb for that. And as you can see, that gives a magnificent effect. Something that cannot be achieved with a stencil. And that really adds a really nice texture to the head, which makes the head look very realistic right now. So you can only imagine when we put a clear coat on there, how good that's going to look. Now I'm not really sure how the underside of the mouth of a bluegill looks, but I'm gonna guess it looks kinda green, so I'm gonna spray a little bit of green there. Alright, so now it's time to blow a little bit more life back into that belly. So I'm gonna use my Vallejo Sun Yellow and Hot Orange again and I'm gonna layer a little bit of that yellow and white orange on there to make that belly pop again and make it very bright. Alright, now for the fins we're gonna keep it super simple, we're just gonna use a little bit of Vallejo brown wash, this is dark brown. We're just gonna put a wash or two onto the fins. And now that this is dry, or at least almost dry, I'm gonna grab a little piece of cloth, make it a little bit wet, just like this. And I'm gonna rub off that paint. And then we get a very light fin again. I'm gonna put on another wash and then we're probably gonna do it again to keep it light, but the fin beams are gonna be a little darker. Alright, and now with some Wicked Detail Black, I'm gonna simply shoot that black spot on the gill plate. I'm gonna use a stencil to cover it off. Also with that same black, I'm gonna do the tip of the fins a little bit. Now another thing that some bluegill have is a little bit of a black scale tip or a scale end on the, on the forehead. So all the scales here on the front sometimes have this black little tip. So we're going to recreate that a little bit by dipping some black wash on there. And now as a finishing touch, I am going to spray the eyes dark brown because that's going to be the most realistic to the bluegill's eyes, at, at least in my reference pictures, because I don't have any realistic matching eyes in that size. So I'm just going to use the eyes that come with the blank and I'm going to spray them with Kenny 2 Dirt Tech Brown and I'm going to make them really dark and that probably is going to look quite natural. 
now it's time to place the ice in and we actually got a new little tool on the web shop which is called the Vallejo pickup tool and this is perfect for placing ice into lures because it's a tiny tool it's actually made for modeling for picking up really tiny pieces for a, a model that you're making and this thing is perfect for picking up an eye and just place it onto your lure in the exact angle that you want it without touching any of the paint, making your lure dirty, missing it or having the risk that you got super glue in your fingers or you leave a fingerprint in a super glue onto your lure. Anything of that is not going to happen with this little tool. So I put some super glue into my eye socket. And as you can see the tool holds it perfectly. I can even push the edges down where there's a little bit of excess candy 2 o on there. And the tool will keep it still. Really useful little tool. Perfect for placing eyes onto your lures. And there we go. Ready for a clear cut. Alright guys, the lure is finished and i never seen a bluegill before in my life so the only reference that I have are some pictures and I think according to this reference picture that I use the most this looks quite realistic. I especially love those gill plates because we used Vallejo liquid mask there and we create a really nice texture which looks very realistic. I have to say this is a very iridescent lure and I hope the camera picks it up. Also that blue in the gill plates is nice and subtle, it's not too bright, it's not sticking off too much, just like I think on a real blue gill is. It's not that fluorescent blue, it's more of a soft metallic blue and that's really something we achieved really well by using this metallic blue with some pearl white over there, with some darker blue spots in there. But I think it's really difficult for me to determine if this is realistic or not or the blue is too much or not because i never seen a real bluegill and I've seen so many different reference pictures. It really depends on where you fish, how they look. But uh, for me this feels like a real fish. It feels really realistic. And that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and very proud of this look. As always, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I use to paint this lure. And this will guide you to my web shop and should you buy anything there, you will be supporting me and the channel. If you liked the video, don't forget to click thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more lure painting content, you can always subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you have any questions, suggestions or you want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye.